This tutorial is brought to you by InformationAnalyticsInstitute.com. Hello and welcome to another Information Analytics Institute video tutorial. My name is Dmitri. Today we will take a look at an example from Chapter 3 of our course. And in this video I will explain how to set up thresholds for the alerts on a grid using a dual slider. Remember, you can download step-by-step -step instructions and files for this dashboard at our website. The link is in the description below. Okay, so what I have here is I have a prepared dashboard. It has a blank canvas, but it has some sample data <coughs> and tables on the spreadsheet in order to speed up the development in this video. Okay, so in order to display this, I'm going to create a grid object. It's here in Others. Uh, and I'm going just to drag it on the canvas and stretch it up a bit and set it to display the da data that I need. And I will set up the grid to display the data in this range here. So you can see here it's 10, 1, 4, 5, and 5. And it's the same numbers on the grid. It's 10, 1, 4, 5, and 5. Uh, now notice that the cells I'm pointing the grid onto are green. That is uh, displaying that these cells are used as a data source for some object on the canvas. Uh, this is not necessary technically, but this is the way we do it for you to see the data flow on the spreadsheet better. Uh, okay, okay. Now notice that the grid now is black and white, uh, so it doesn't have any color coding or color highlights. And also notice that the alerts tab of the grid settings is grayed out, it's not available. As soon as I check this checkbox for enable alerts, the grid obtains some color and the settings for the grid, for the grid alerts, become available. You may immediately notice that the grid is highlighted, all the cells on it are highlighted in green. And that is because currently it's set up to be a minimum value to 30 range colored green and so all of these values are less than 30 they fall in between minus infinity or minimum and 30 so that's why they are green also notice that there are two options uh, for the alerting there's the percent of target called as a percent of target and by value we'll use by value for this example and we will get back to as the percent of target later in this video Okay, so also notice that the uh, cell right here is colored gray. That's because the cell that feeds it from the spreadsheet is empty, so this cell does not have any data. Therefore, it cannot be colored into any of the alerting colors because it doesn't have a value to be compared to the alerting settings. Now, we will use by value, and you can see here now we have three ranges defined. It's minimum or minus infinity to 30, 30 to 70, and 70 to maximum or plus infinity. Uh, these are the ranges to which the colors are appended, and in whichever of these ranges the number in the cell falls, the corresponding color will be used to color that cell. Currently they are set to their default values, and what we can do here is we can change them manually. So let's say here, instead of having 30, let's say I would enter 7. So this would change this range from minus infinity or minimum to 7. But what it would also do as I hit enter here, it would change the next range from 7 to 70. Because the top threshold on this range is automatically set up as the lower threshold on the next range. So now everything from minimum to 7 is green and you can see values from 7 to 70 or to whatever in this case became yellow right here on the grid. We have three ranges here right now but what we can do is we can add more. We can have as many as 512 ranges and have as uh, little as 2. There's no point in having less than 2 being 1 because it would then not distinguish anything from anything else and you could just color the cells into any of the color. So let's add a range right here. To do that, I would enter a value. Let's say it was uh, 5. 
And what it would do it is the value that I've entered here, it would find into which current range it fits and it would separate or split that range into two ranges. So if, if I enter 5, it would separate this range number 1, the green range, to minimum to 5 and 5 to 7. So it's going to introduce the other range. Let's do that. And you can see here that indeed it went to from minimum to 5 and from 5 to 7. And on the grid, you can see that the values that are from 5 to 7 have a slightly different green color like these sixes right here, or the seven. What can also be done here, interestingly, is the thresholds for these ranges can be made dynamic. And to do that, we can tie the threshold values to the spreadsheet cells. So to do that, I will click Use a Range. Call, this is a checkbox, I'm going to check it. And notice that this entry, this edit box and the add button change as I click this, they change to the address of the range and the address choosing button that you probably already seen in other Excelsius uh, settings. Okay, so I'll click that and you can see here I'm selecting a range. I'm going to select these four values and you can see it's one, two, four and six. And as I click OK, you can see the same 1, 2, 4, and 6 appear as both top and bottom thresholds of the ranges. But we have 5 ranges and just 4 of these values. So you can say that you have one, one more range than you have, that you have selected cells. That happens because there's always minimum to the lowest number in the uh, range and also the highest number in the range to the maximum. The valuable thing about this is that as the values change in the spreadsheet, they immediately get changed here. So you can tie any logic or another control object uh, to these cells, and as those change the cell values, the value and threshold levels for the ranges right here would change, changing the alerting of the grid. So if I change this to 3, you can see that immediately the top threshold of this range and the bottom threshold of this range became 3. Another important concept is uh, the colors used to highlight and to alert the ranges displayed are here. Currently we're using automatic colors and we're using a certain uh, gradient or pattern to do that. So if I click this icon right here, you would see gradients that are available. Uh, from Excelsior's built-in and we can also create a new gradient. So if I click this gradient, let's say I wanted to use a single color saturation based gradient, uh, you can see that now the values uh, are highlighted with the same color but it's differently saturated. That can be used for various reasons like with the altitude for example or things like that. Um, I can also create a custom gradient. Uh, so where you can choose two colors or three colors to be basis of the gradient and um, that will be, can be also used to color objects such as a grid or others. We will not do that for now. I'm going to stay with this gradient. What we also can do, importantly, is we can choose uh, specific colors for every range. So if I uncheck this enable all the colors, you would see these icons became available. And so if I wanted to choose some custom colors for specific ranges, I can do it right here. So let's choose red, uh, let's say yellow, green, blue. This is very dark. Let's use right away. And purple. Uh, and notice here that for the no data part, for this cell, we can use uh, a different color and we can choose it by clicking on this icon and let's just for the sake of this display choose orange. Now notice this cell became orange and notice how all other cells became colored differently depending on which range do they fall into. So let's say this 5 falls into the 4 to 6, thus it became blue. The 3 falls into the range of 1 to 3, so it became yellow. Another interesting thing, and you can notice here if I delete this 5 from the spreadsheet, it immediately becomes orange because this is our color for the no data. Let's go back to the automated colors in our usual green to red gradient. Uh, now, 
uh, usually green means good and red means bad. So currently uh, this uh, range of colors is displaying lower values or better because one is considered green or good and as closer, uh, the closer we get to six, you know, the more red the color is and six is colored red. We can change that by choosing a high values or good option instead of low values or good. So what it would do, it would invert the coloring of these ranges. So now the lower values become red and the higher values become green. These two are very useful and very important. For example, uh, low values or good can be uh, used for defects on a factory where less defects is obviously better. Or you can have high values or good in a situation where you have scores. For example, when it's a questionnaire or a results of, for the audit of the company or of the business. Now, we currently used a by value option, which compares a value and puts it into one of the ranges. There's also the as percent of target option available. And what that does, that compares a value in a cell to a particular target value. Let's choose this target value by clicking here. And I'm going to choose 10. So now you can notice that uh, the ranges became percentage. A based so instead of comparing a value and putting it to one of the ranges it compares a value against the target calculates how much uh, uh, it is uh, of the target in percent and puts it into one of the ranges based on the percent value that we got so let's say 4 is 40% of 10 so it falls into 30% to 70% but if I change it to 45% to 70%, the 4 will become red because 40% is less than 45 and it falls into the minimum to 45 range. Another interesting and very unique feature for the S% percent of target is middle values are good. And what that does, it changes this from just a single direction to two directions. So the values that go and tend to be in the middle become green and as, the further you go away from the middle point, the worse it is considered. That can be useful, for example, for train scheduling, when the train leaving early or arriving early might be as bad as arriving or leaving late. I'm going to uh, disable the alerts here for now. And what we will, what we will do is we will make the alerting of this grid object dependent on the value that is entered by a control object in Excelsius. In this case, we'll use a dual slider. So I'm going to disable this for now and let's go to do that. Okay, so now let's add a dual slider component to control the alerting of a grid. I'm going to select this dual slider 2. I'm going to stretch it out so it is wider and let's set its uh, maximum limit to 10 so it spends from 0 to 10 and let's enable the limits uh, to be displayed so you can see here it goes from 0 to 10 uh, okay uh, next I'm going to go to general and set its lower and higher value insertion points now these two values are the positions of two sliders on a dual slider and they insert some value into some cell. So we're going to choose this cell for lower value and uh, this cell for higher value. Now notice that these cells are yellow. That is not technically necessary, but we color code them yellow uh, to show that these cells receive data from the canvas. So some control object is inserting data into these cells. And that is to aid the data flow to, to be able to read it, to see what cells have what function. Uh, let's just enter some sample numbers in here. These will not affect the dashboard while it's running, but for the preview mode, for the design view, it would uh, display these values on the dual slider. So I'm going to just enter three and let's say seven. And you can see that these sliders uh, obtained these values and are placed now accordingly. Uh, when uh, the dashboard is running and these uh, sliders are moved, so the settings of the dual slider are tweaked, 
the insertion happens instantly so it is real time as soon as you move that slider the value in the spreadsheet changes immediately okay so let's get back to the grid and let's turn uh, the alerts for it on so I'm going to enable alerts again we will use by value and this time we'll use a range and the range in this case would be these two values these two cells that the dual slider inserts into our spreadsheet and notice we got one more range than we have thresholds so it's from minimum to three from three to seven and from seven to maximum because three and seven are entered here and we will also use high values are good because in our case this is a questionnaire so the higher the score is the better it is so notice now the lower scores became red the mediocre ones became yellow and the good ones became green let's preview the dashboard and see if it works there it is and now I move a slider and you can see that the highlighting of the grid is changing uh, and you can see here for example number four is red because it's less than five and everything to the left of the five is red if I move it to four you see the fours became yellow if I move it even further all the threes would become yellow because now they are to the left of uh, the to the right I'm sorry to the of the yellow marker so this is the yellow part of the dual slider the last thing I want to do is also to enable the alerts on the dual slider object itself the settings for the alerting on different objects are separate so they are not set up simultaneously but I want to set up alerts on the dual slider object as well for it to display where are the colors on this scale from 0 to 10 and how the grid is alerted. To do that I'm going to go, to go back to the design view and I'm going to do to set up pretty much the same settings I'm going to the alert settings of a dual slider I will enable alerts select by value we will use the same range like so uh, we will leave the, the auto colors enabled and we will select the high values are good so now I will preview the dashboard again and you can see that the colors on the dual slider are now indicating what number would obtain what color so you can see this is the three this is the seven so this is four five and six and all four fives and sixes and the three are yellow and indeed they are yellow on this grid if I move this to four you can see now the threes fall into the red zone so they indeed became red and I can do the same thing and drag this to nine let's say so only the nine and ten are green now and everything in between four included and nine uh, is yellow so you can see this right here Okay, let's get back to the uh, actual real dashboard this dashboard is built in the chapter 3 of our training course and you can see here we're using kind of the same dual slider and the grid but you can see here it's used in the context of a questionnaire uh, it's like the client survey and you can see here that this part of the grid is uh, alerted pretty much the same way as we had it in our example but another interesting thing, as the values in the grid change, the alerting follows that immediately. So let's say this is uh, the data for January and we have a combo box here to change the month. And so I'm not touching the dual slider to change the thresholds for the alerting, but if I change this month to February, notice that the values and the colors on the grid change because we have different set of data for February. And you can see here, uh, that for example uh, this cell is 4.81 so it's more than 4 and it is green but if I change the month to February it becomes 3.45 and that falls in between 3 and 4 uh, therefore it is yellow so the alerting changes real time and immediately after the data is changed in the grid remember that you can download the files as well as a step-by-step -step instruction for this dashboard at our website. The link is in the description below. I hope this helps. 
subscribe to our channel to get more tutorials like this. Thank you for watching and good luck. Here at Information Analytics Institute, we provide remote and on-site Crystal Dashboard Excelsius training for people who want to start building interactive dashboards or seek to get better at it. The dashboards that are built during the training course cover numerous useful Excelsius components, methods, and dashboard building techniques to get you started building dashboards in no time. We provide training for database and Lawson connectivity where you can learn to connect dashboards to various data sources. We also provide audit and completion services where we audit your existing dashboards for compliance with dashboarding best practices or complete any dashboard that you have remaining unfinished. For more information or to contact us, visit our website at www.informationanalyticsinstitute.com.